the Brussels Engineering Summit, March 2022. When architect Luis Mendoza from Manila clicked to his first slide, a six-story bamboo building, the room erupted in laughter. Bamboo skyscrapers? scoffed Pierre Dubois, France's most celebrated architect. Monsieur, we're discussing serious engineering, not garden decorations. He stood gesturing dismissively. Bamboo is for scaffolding. Furniture, but load-bearing buildings? This is why developing nations struggle. No understanding of real materials, Dr. Ingrid Schneider from Berlin added coldly. We've spent billions on carbon-neutral concrete and engineered steel, and you're presenting grass? Because that's what bamboo is, grass. The room laughed harder. Luis remained calm. He'd expected this. Mr. Dubois, he said quietly, what if I told you there's a six-story bamboo school that survived a 7.2 earthquake? An earthquake that collapsed every concrete building around it, including a modern hospital? Would you be interested? The laughter stopped. Impossible, Dr. Schneider snapped. Show us proof. Bamboo can't withstand those forces. Basic physics. Louis smiled. Then come to the Philippines. Bring your equipment. Test it yourself. If I'm wrong, I'll resign. But if I'm right, you'll reconsider everything you know about earthquake engineering. Pierre couldn't refuse in front of 400 colleagues. Fine. When I prove this is fake, I expect a public apology. Deal, Louis said simply. Pierre and the seven European engineers arrived with $2.5 million in testing equipment. Seismographs, stress analyzers, ground-penetrating radar. They'd expose this bamboo myth by dinner. After three hours on mountain roads, they arrived. Pierre stepped out and froze. The Bagong Pagasa Learning Center rose six stories into the sky, all bamboo, impossibly delicate, seemingly defying gravity. This, Pierre said, this is your miracle? He touched the bamboo columns, massive poles, but still grass. The joints used plant fiber and resin, no steel, no concrete, no modern materials. When was the earthquake? Asked Marcus, his assistant, setting up sensors. Eighteen months ago, answered Tatai Gorio, the elderly master builder. 7.2 magnitude. Everything concrete nearby collapsed. Shopping mall, down. Hospital, down. 200-year-old church, down. He smiled. This school? Not even a crack. 340 children inside, all walked out safely. Dr. Schneider shook her head. Impossible. Under those forces, this should have collapsed. And yet... Tatai Goryo said gently. It didn't. The team analyzed the bamboo all day. Core samples, density tests, microscopic examination. Every result baffled them. Pierre, this bamboo doesn't match our database, Marcus reported. Lignin density 40% higher than normal. Silica content three times expected. It's like it's been engineered at a cellular level. Genetic modification, Pierre suggested. Louis smiled. No, just 12 generations of knowledge. Tatai Gorio's family discovered which bamboo species grown in which soil, at which elevation, harvested at which moon phase, produces these properties. Moon phases? Dr. Schneider laughed. Astrology now? Tatai Gorio spoke in Tagalog. Luis translated, The moon affects a sap flow. Harvest wrong, insects destroy it in months. Harvest correctly, the bamboo becomes nearly indestructible. His family has 150 years of documented data. The Europeans exchanged uneasy glances. They found the bamboo was treated with fermented plant resins, volcanic ash, and mineral salts, nothing synthetic. Yet it was fire-resistant to 800 degrees, completely pest-proof and waterproof beyond any lab treatment. How long does this last? Dr. Schneider asked. The oldest sample in our village is from 1947, Luis replied. Still perfect, 75 years. Your synthetic treatments break down in 20. Pierre set up hydraulic rams to simulate earthquake forces. We'll find the failure point. Their calculations predicted failure at 0.3 g ground acceleration, a moderate quake. They started at 0.1 g. The building barely moved. At 0.3 g, their predicted breaking point. The building swayed gently. It's not resisting, Marcus said, confused. 
It's moving with the force. Like bamboo in wind, Tatai Goryo said. You build structures that fight earthquakes. We build structures that dance with them. They increase to 0.5 G, a strong earthquake. The structure swayed dramatically, bamboo bending at impossible angles, but nothing broke. At 0.8 G, very strong, the building still performed perfectly. Poles bent 15 degrees, absorbed massive forces, then smoothly returned to position. This is impossible, Dr. Schneider stared at her screens. The connections should be ripping apart. Something should be failing. There are no bolts, Luis said. Look closer. Pierre examined the joints with new eyes, interlocking bamboo cuts, plant fiber bindings, wooden pegs, joints that could flex, rotate, absorb stress. It's not a building, Marcus whispered. It's an organism. The whole structure moves as one living system. Pierre brought out the earthquake simulator, a platform that could recreate actual historical earthquakes. We'll subject a section to your exact 7.2 earthquake, he announced. If it survives, I'll believe. If it fails, you admit this was luck. They spent hours isolating a two-story section and mounting it on the platform. You're not worried? Pierre asked Tatai Gorio. The old man smiled. The real earthquake already tested it. Why worry about a copy? The simulation began. The platform lurched violently, replicating the exact ground motion from 2021. The bamboo section danced wildly, poles bending at extreme angles, joints flexing dramatically. It looked catastrophic. Three minutes and 42 seconds of violent shaking. When it stopped, the section stood perfectly intact. Not one connection failed. Not one pole splintered. Pierre stood motionless, his worldview crumbling. Run it again, he said quietly. Maybe it was weakened. They ran it again, same result. They ran it a third time, 20% stronger than the real earthquake. Still nothing failed. Dr. Schneider was crying. How did we miss this? How did centuries of engineering miss this? That evening, Pierre sat with Tatai Gorio, humble, eager to understand. How do you calculate loads without computers? Pierre asked. Tatai Gorio smiled. I don't calculate like you. I feel. I listen to the bamboo. I've worked with it for 60 years. But that's not engineering, Pierre protested. That's intuition. Is it less reliable? Tatai Gorio challenged. Your hospital collapsed and killed 47 people. My school had 340 children. All survived. Which method worked better? Pierre had no answer. Tatai Gorio continued. You see engineering as controlling nature, forcing materials. We see it as cooperating with nature. Bamboo wants to bend. It grows bending in wind. So we design structures that bend. Concrete wants to be rigid. So when earthquakes force it to move, it breaks. He flexed a bamboo pole. Your computer knows mathematics. But does it understand how bamboo feels when stressed? Does it hear the sound of a joint about to fail? The Europeans realized they were witnessing a different form of engineering intelligence, one that integrated generations of observation, tactile feedback, and deep material understanding in ways their analytical approaches had completely missed. The final day, they visited the collapsed hospital ruins, a concrete skeleton, floors pancaked together. Built by a European firm, certified safe, it had failed catastrophically. The bamboo school 400 meters away survived without a scratch. Why did you challenge me at the conference? Pierre asked Luis as they stood in the ruins. You knew I'd mock you. Luis looked at him steadily. Because buildings like this keep getting built. Engineers from wealthy nations tell us our traditional methods are backward. They convince our governments to adopt your codes. And then people die when your buildings fail. He gestured at the bamboo school. That building cost one-third what this hospital cost. Better ventilation, better light. No air conditioning needed. It'll last a hundred years. It survived the earthquake. But our own engineers dismiss it as not real architecture because you taught them to. Pierre felt the weight of that truth. Back in Europe, Pierre published a bombshell paper. The bamboo school that broke engineering certainty. He documented everything and made a stunning admission. Western engineering had become so focused on rigid strength that it had missed superior approaches. 
flexibility, not rigidity, might be the future. The paper went viral. Universities invited Filipino engineers to teach. Major firms integrated bamboo into designs. Engineering schools created courses on flexible seismic design. The bamboo school became an international destination. Over 2,000 engineers from 40 countries have visited. Today, Pierre teaches engineering humility at the Sorbonne. First day of class, he shows the earthquake simulation footage and tells students about the week that changed his career. Tatai Gorio still builds, now assisted by young engineers eager to learn. When visitors ask about the famous Europeans who tested his building, he chuckles. They came to prove me wrong, he says. Instead, the bamboo proved them wrong. But that's okay. Being wrong is how we learn. Pierre tells his students, Sometimes the most advanced engineering doesn't come from laboratories. Sometimes it comes from an elderly man in the Philippines who learned from his grandfather, who learned by watching bamboo bend in the wind. He pauses, letting it sink in. And sometimes the greatest innovation is recognizing that what we called primitive was sophisticated all along. The bamboo that Europe mocked is now the future of sustainable construction. And the engineer who laughed the loudest became its greatest advocate. Because the best engineers aren't the ones who never make mistakes. They're the ones humble enough to admit when they're wrong.